in. How are you? Good. Hey, Wendell.
Thank you, Ellen, and good morning, and welcome to Watkins United Methodist Church this morning. Whether you're with us in the sanctuary or on Facebook Live or YouTube or wherever you are in the world, we're so glad that you are with us today. Please join me in our opening prayer as we start our service. God of grace, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to worship you. Thank you that today we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. Thank you that as we gather together, we join with all Christians across the world to glorify your holy name. Come be with us, inspire us, and lead us in our time together. We ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now.
Would you recite the Apostles' Creed with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Come now, fount of every blessing, attune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. And thank you, Jacob and Ellen, for leading us in that music. Well, good morning. good morning. And welcome to Watkins United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here to worship with us. Many of you for the first time inside the sanctuary for a year. Isn't that right? So, amen. We are glad to be here and glad. There's something about being inside the sanctuary, isn't there? There's something about after worshiping online for over a year, <laughs> that we're able to be together safely inside of this place. For some of us, this feels like home, doesn't it? And I hope if you're visiting with us, or maybe your first time or a couple times visiting with us, that you do feel at home here in this place. I do want to lift up our Watkins missions on the go for this month as EACM, the Eastern Area Community Ministries, housed right down the road. Um, we are collecting several items for them um, so that we are able to bless our neighbors in extraordinary ways. And so if you have not dropped off toilet paper or shampoo, are you allowed to say toilet paper in the, in the pulpit? I, I think you can't. But if you can bring toilet paper, let's do it again for good measure, and shampoo and other items, you can find that information on our website or social media accounts. There's a, a bin right outside the door, and so you can drop that in there anytime for the rest of this month. Or if you brought it to worship, wherever you want to leave it, we'll make sure to pick it up and make sure it's delivered to the Eastern Area Community Ministries. And so we'll pray a special prayer for them this morning. Also, I want to continue to, to thank you for your generosity throughout this strange year. 
a time in which our, our tithes and our offerings have supported us throughout the, the, this past year during this COVID-19 pandemic. You know, the church never closed, did it? We may have stopped having in-person worship. I maybe only saw 10 people in the pews since I first started here, um, but we're continuing to do extraordinary work in the name of Jesus Christ. And so if you are a member of Watkins, we do encourage you to come continue to give. And if you are visiting with us, please give only as you feel led. There are a couple of ways in which you are able to give. Um, you may still continue to mail a check. You may continue to give through Venmo, and our handle is there on the screen in front of you. And of course, um, we do encourage you, if you have a smartphone, to download the Church Center app. That's an easy way for you to give through your phone, through a mobile app. And you can also access that online on our website. On the top right corner, it says Give. It's also a great way for you to check up where you are in your pledge, your commitment here to the church, um, and many different ways that you're able to give. As you saw as you came in, there's a, a beautiful box made by the Bohannons. So thank you for the Bohannons. Made a, a wooden box for us, um, both when you entered this sanctuary through the lobby there. And as you exit, which I'll, I'll help you exit again um, after our first service is concluded, there's a box right there. If you'd like to, to drop in cash or check, we'll make sure it goes um, to the right place. So in all that in mind, let us go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are so grateful. We're grateful that no matter who we are, what we've done, or where we come from, that you call us your beloved child. And God, we bring with us many different things in this second week of in-person and online worship. We bring with us many struggles and disappointments. We bring with us many, many ways in which people have possibly irritated us or we just live in a state of confusion of what to do next. And God, we also bring joy. We bring all different joys in this past years, whether it's, it's birthdays that we have celebrated or new births or weddings. And God, we also, as we come here in this place, remember those. And God, today we specifically lift up EACM, our, our neighbors right down the road. We give you thanks for their tremendous ministry to those in need. We give you thanks for the ways in which they live out the gospel for all people and the ways that they help and support folks with their physical needs here. And so God, as we continue to collect and we continue to bless, may those go in ways that people may experience the love and the grace of Jesus Christ for themselves. God, as we give back just a portion of who we are and what we've done, we realize that everything is a gift from you, O oh God. And so, God, we ask that you'd bless those that give and those that receive, that this world may look more like your kingdom today than it did the day before, that we may see transformation of heart and minds found in the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus and all God's beloved children said, Amen. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with loving zeal, the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, sin sick and sorrow one whom Christ doth heal. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring. With fervent prayer, the wayward and the lost by restless passions tossed, Redeemed at countless cost from dark despair. Christ for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring. With one accord, with us the work to share, with us reproach to dare. With us the cross to bear for Christ our Lord.
We do want to welcome all those who may be joining with us online as well and hope that you'll comment throughout the space. And if you are here in the sanctuary, I'm not offended if you go on your phones or tablets and welcome our online community as well um, to worship. A great way for us to stay connected throughout this time together. Today we are continuing our message series called Living Faith, Journeying Through the Book of James. And I hope and encourage you to continue to read through that reading plan that you received in your emails almost a week and a half ago. We've also posted that on our social media accounts and on our website, so if you'd like to download that, that we'll spend each day reading, praying, and thinking through how the book of James can transform us from the inside out. Many ways in which we will dive into this book, in which we debated about last week, whether it should belong in the Bible at all, is what we've been talking about, and what truth and power does this book bring to each one of us. So we'll continue that. Um, today in the reading of God's word. But before we open that up, let us go to God in prayer. God, we're grateful that no matter if we find ourselves here in the sanctuary in a pew, or home in our living room or dining room table, you are there. And we thank you for the many ways in which you make yourself known to each one of us and pray that you continue to do so. God, as we open up this word of old, as we open up this story in which people have read for centuries and centuries, may you speak something new. May you speak something fresh that we know only comes from you, O oh God. That your same spirit as we'll celebrate in Pentecost in just a little bit will be in the reading of your word. We ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ and all God's beloved children said, Amen. So I encourage you to open up your Bibles if you brought one or your phone or tablet to YouVersion Bible app, and of course it'll be projected for you on the screen in front of you. But we'll be in the book of James, the second chapter, we'll read verses 1 through 13. Hear this word. My brothers and sisters, when you show favoritism, you deny the faithfulness of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has been resurrected in glory. Imagine two people coming into your meeting. One has a gold ring and fine clothes, while the other is poor, dressed in filthy rags. Then suppose that you were to take a special notice of the one wearing fine clothes, saying, Here's an excellent place. Sit here. But to the poor person you say, Stand over there. Or here, sit at my feet. Wouldn't you have shown favoritism among yourselves and become evil-minded judges? My dear brothers and sisters, listen. Hasn't God chosen those who are poor by worldly standards to be rich in terms of faith? Hasn't God chosen the poor as heirs of the kingdom he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Don't the wealthy make life difficult for you? Aren't they the ones who drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who insult the good name spoken over you at your baptism? You do well when you really fulfill the royal law found in Scripture Love your neighbor as yourself. But when you show favoritism, you are committing a sin, and by that same law, you are exposed as a lawbreaker. Anyone tries to keep all of the law but fails at one point is guilty of failing to keep all of it. The one who said, don't commit adultery, also said, don't commit murder. So if you don't commit adultery, but do commit murder, you are a lawbreaker. In every way, then, speak and act as people who will be judged by the law of freedom. There will be no mercy in judgment for anyone who hasn't shown mercy. Mercy overrules judgment. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, James has for us a hypothetical situation to his audience. Perhaps when he's speaking, he's speaking as one who probably knows what's going on inside of these communities. And he may be addressing a, a certain instance that's happened inside of this. And James does a good job at talking with them and using an illustration in which his audience would understand. So last week we talked about what? Do you remember? What did we talk about last week? You can speak out loud. I know it's been a week though, right? And if your week's been anything like mine, it's been a week. So last week, we talked about hearing and doing. 
Hearing and doing is what we talk about. And so it was not just to hear the word, but also to live out the word. It it called us to be expert listeners and to be slow to grow angry. Why? Well, if you're reading along our reading plan, you have figured out a couple things about James. James casts this vision of what the faithfulness of God and what the faithfulness of God's people looks like. And how do we adopt our true identity found as children of God? What it looks like living the way in which God calls us to live. There's a kind of a wholeheartedness James talks about that the followers of Jesus must exemplify. They talk the talk, but more importantly, they walk the walk. But then James does something interesting. Then James does something interesting, and he, and he says to his people, well, that all sounds good in theory, doesn't it? You'd agree that the things you're supposed to do are take care of the sick, and I hope you're doing that, but you're also supposed to be taking care of the orphans and the widows. Good, but let's look at what actually happens inside of your congregation. So he has a story for them, one that may or may not have already happened. Let's say there was a nice-dressed man that comes and visits your church. I mean, this man is very good-looking. Can we say that? He's a very good-looking man. He has a full head of hair. Not that good-looking means full head of hair, but this is my example. He has a a sharp, expensive suit that he comes in with, and he has a nice, beautiful tie. He has freshly polished shoes. He may have this bright, gold, large, you know, wedding band on his finger. And then the other one has this kind of big, bold uh, alumni ring from a very prestigious university. Is this sharp dressed man treated as more special than a person experiencing homelessness? Say if he walked in and then another person who's experiencing homelessness was with you, would our ushers direct the sharp dressed man towards the front and the person experiencing homelessness in the back? How would those both be treated side by side? And James says, I'm going to go out here on a limb for you and say you would give the snazzy dressed person a more prominent place. And you would probably give the person a fold out chair in the back who's experiencing homelessness. You see, you don't have to dig in very far into scriptures and, of course, into the book of James to see that that behavior is, is really not God's way of living. James states that the religion that is pure is to care for orphans and widows, that God has chosen the poor to be rich in faith and close to God more so than those who have wealth. Yes, our temptation may be to lift up the nicely dressed amongst us, but that the person who may seem to have it all together, you know those folks, the people who seem to have it all taken care of, because that is who we desire to be. We project onto others what we would like. And therefore treat somebody else nicely or more prominently than ones who we don't want to be like. See, we'd like to be comfortable. We'd like to be upwardly mobile as much as we can to only experience life's highest point. You see, the issue for James in our scripture passage is is a desire to secure our own well-being. But it might be done at the expense of other people. See, James has this whole movement, and he summarizes this whole movement in the royal law. You'll see on the screen in front of you, the royal law. The royal law, of course, being Jesus' instruction for us to love our neighbors as much as we love our own selves. And Jesus, of course, I mean, James takes it, of course, another step forward. And he challenges us to examine how we treat all classes of people. It easily goes to that direction. Maybe folks with less social power than we may have. Or maybe folks in a different uh, economic class. This past week I can't stop thinking about those who may be refugees or immigrants in our midst. Or, church, or children or persons of color or any other tiers or categories we unintentionally or intentionally put others in. You see, the interesting point for me is James doesn't just here condemn the rich. He doesn't do that. James instead condemns any kind of favoritism we may show. It's in our favoritism that we may give preference to those of higher status and miss the very movement of God. You see, rather than be partial towards the rich, the community of faith is to fulfill the royal law. 
You see, it's an issue back in James' day because there's much like ours an expectation going on here. There is flattery and showing partiality towards the rich was something to be expected behavior in that society. And so folks are under this great societal pressure not to be judged in their own judging of rich and poor to show partiality, but emphasizes, therefore, a different way of living. The law of love. And not only does James hold people accountable to not showing favoritism but the, to the rich, but he goes the extra mile for us. Saying, sure, you may not show favoritism, but it's in the same way if you do, then that's the same thing for us as being lawbreakers of those who murder. Or being lawbreakers of those who commit adultery. You see, failure to love is just as much about missing God's purposes as doing those such things. You see, for us today, for us today, I think it's about living as though we'll be judged by the law of love. Live as if you will be judged by the law of love because in our scripture passage, mercy overcomes judgment, so be merciful. You see, I like that idea of judgment, and I wonder if you do too. I like that idea of judgment because oftentimes when we think of judgment inside of the church, we're handed a picture that may not be accurate. We're handed a picture of maybe some some old guy in a large throne leading off all the different ways in which you have gone wrong in this life, and if you're anything like me, that list would probably be quite long. But the judgment in our passage in the book of James is like this. Live as though you be judged by the law of love. Do you love God and love neighbor? Well, then there's a faithful way to look at judgment than the whole kind of hell, fire, and brimstone thing. So I wonder. I wonder when we reflect upon the last year, what ways we chose that path. I wonder as we reflect upon the last year if we chose the path of love or we chose the path of hatred, evil, ignorance. When we have the path of love set before us, the law of love, what ways did we go off of that path? Because for us, I wonder if we're tempted in that judging to judge others. And I can think of no better example than my friend Ted Lasso. Have you watched that show yet? Have you watched that? Yeah? Anybody? Okay, we have one. One person watched Ted Lasso? Man, this is going to be a bummer. Okay, anyways, there's this great show called Ted Lasso. It's on Apple+. Plus. It's played by Jason Sudeikis, which I think is one of the most brilliant actors of our day, okay? And so Ted Lasso is this fantastic show. And really, it's one that I've already watched not once, but twice, and I'm on my third time of watching it. It goes up in my same, in Rob's hierarchy of TV shows, Friday Night Lights is still at the top. Did you ever watch that show? And then The Office and Parks and Rec are kind of competing together in the middle bracket, and then Ted Lasso is somewhere in the middle of that. But anyways, Ted Lasso is about an American football coach who goes over to England to coach at the Premier League soccer team. And without giving too much away, because I think you should go back after the service and go watch it, um, it walks alongside this person named Ted, who's an optimistic and resilient coach, but knows nothing about the game of soccer. And it really makes me laugh and cry in the same way every episode. But there's this great scene in Ted Lasso in which he's playing a game of darts. And he's playing a game of darts with somebody else inside of the show. And the other person doesn't know how good Ted is at darts. And the other person places a large bet, a large wager on this, much like you might do in the Kentucky Derby. I don't know what you do, but, you know, as that's coming up. And he thinks that Ted does not know how to play darts as well as he does. And so Ted, of course, beats him in the game of darts and quotes Walt Whitman, which becomes one of my favorite quotes in the last year. Be curious, not judgmental. Be curious, not judgmental. You see, that quote has stuck with me since I first heard it. And I, really, I know it's Walt Whitman, but in my mind, it's Ted Lasso, okay? Now, if I watched this season, right, multiple times, it reverberates 
in my mind. Be curious, not judgmental. You see, when I'm tempted to judge someone, I try to be curious about them instead. Instead of going and, and making assumptions about somebody else, instead of going and, and thinking, I, I don't agree maybe with them or what their viewpoint on something is, I, I try to be curious about their life instead. Where did they grow up? What was their relationship like with their parents? What caused them to act in a way that maybe bothered me? I also think about what brings them life. What brings them joy in this world? What are they afraid of? You see, often when I'm asking these questions, it takes me to a good introspective place within me. And I start to ask the question, why am I bothered by what they're doing? What are they really reminding and unearthing within me? Is this more about me than it is about them? Be curious, not judgmental. Live as if you'll be judged by the law of love. And remember, remember in the end, mercy triumphs over judgment. Will you pray with me? Oh God, as we come before you with all that we are and all that we have, you know each one of us to our core. That you have created us as beautiful. You have created us as, as, as folks knowing that they are created by a loving God and a loving creation. But sometimes, God, it becomes easier to be a person of judgment rather than mercy. It becomes more comfortable to walk in the way of judgment than it is to walk in the way of love. It becomes easier for us to be susceptible to judgment rather than curiosity. And so, God, may we, like our friend James, find the only path worth taking is the path of love. And exemplify not only when it's easy to be a person of love, but even, and maybe more especially, when it is the more difficult. To be a folks who, who love well, who be first to be merciful to those who exemplify grace-filled and forgiving ways. Rather than the paths that are often easier to take. Push us. Push us into your good future. That we may see transformation. That we may see this world as a more loving and graceful and merciful place. Rather than a place of judgment. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ and all God's beloved children said. Amen. Past embrace, my sin forgiven. I'm blameless in your sight. My history.
We do encourage you to log on to our website or any of our social media to find the many ways in which you're able to plug in. We're now in a time of our processing of trying to figure out what life looks like next, right? We've put this on kind of our calendar of relaunching in-person worship, and so you're on the second week. And now we're trying to figure out what does it look like to engage in Sunday school and small groups and other different activities in the church. So I encourage you to be patient <laughs> as we try to wade these waters safely and carefully, um, but out of love and grace for all people. And so that's where we're at. Um, we will also be updating ways in which we are able to worship together. Some of this, you are guinea pigs in the first couple of weeks, right? Do you feel like a guinea pig sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, so but we'll be figuring out how many more folks we can come and RSVP through our system right now and also... Um, ways that we're able to engage in congregational singing. And so we're all thinking and praying through that, all right? I just want to give you a quick update. If you have suggestions, um, we're always open to that and any comments you may feel in reflecting upon this time. But over, over that, it is so good to see your faces, although masked, um, at this point. I do ask that you'll stand as you're able for today's benediction. Just a reminder right before I release you, we do encourage you to walk forward um, and go out the doors right here. Um, there's a tithes and offerings box right there, so go through that front door. I do encourage you, um, please don't congregate inside of here. If you'd like to go speak to each other with masks and everything, to walk outside. It should be beautiful by this time, and so um, you are able to do that in the parking lot. But please try not to, we're trying to limit time inside of this place together. Um, but above all that, I hope that you just feel loved. Now receive this benediction. Now go in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. To be a people who value mercy over judgment. To be a folks who live out the law of love for all people. That we may see the kingdom of God in unexpected ways. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace, my friends. See you next week.